Since the era of the Industrial Revolution, steam power has played a very important role in producing the energy we need, in kind of electricity. More than 90% of electricity produced globally comes from heat-generating power plants that use coal, natural gas, and nuclear power plants. It is undeniable that these resources have a negative impact on the environment. Moreover, they are typically just 35% efficient, with moving parts that cannot withstand temperatures beyond 2,000 degrees Celsius. However, MIT and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory researchers have made an important breakthrough, surpassing the steam turbine's efficiency with a different type of heat engine, which could revolutionize how we produce and store energy. So, what are the advantages they have that could replace steam turbine technology? Welcome to Evolutionary. As we are going to explore the advantages of this technology, we need to understand first why we need this advanced technology. Why thermal battery systems? First off, you might have noticed that the cost for generating renewable energy sources has decreased significantly over the previous years. In 1989, solar panels cost 94% more than they do today. You can buy solar panels 3% of what they were in 1989. The reason behind that fall is that the solar panels became more efficient and increased production. With that fact, solar energy has surpassed all other electricity sources in terms of cost in 2020. According to the International Energy Agency, solar is part of renewable energy sources and renewables are more environmentally friendly than fossil fuels. Yet we still highly rely on coal, oil, and natural gas to produce two-thirds of our electricity mainly because they're more reliable. While it's true that we can always burn more fuel, we can't make the sun shine or the wind blow all day long. Therefore, the battery is the solution for storing excess renewable power, but only temporarily since batteries lose charge over time and the storage only lasts days or weeks. All that being said, it is unlikely to save tons of solar power in the summer season to be used during the winter. It is possible, however, we haven't reached that technology yet to have electrical batteries that don't lose their charge so quickly. For that reason, there is another alternative that could make a renewable grid more reliable, which is thermal battery systems. Thermophotovoltaic cells Over 90% of the world's electricity is generated from heat, in one way or another, and heat engines are the devices that handle the conversion process. The most common example is steam turbines. Their mechanics are simple. The heat is usually created by burning coal or gas, which then boils water into steam that spins a turbine, and that mechanical energy is converted into electricity. Another type of heat engine is thermophotovoltaic cells. The photons from a heat source are immediately converted into electricity using semiconducting materials. TPV cells are similar to solar photovoltaic cells in that they don't have any moving parts. They are more efficient than turbines because they can also convert heat at higher temperatures. However, TPV cells haven't historically been as effective as turbines, turning only 20% of the heat energy into electricity as opposed to 35% for steam turbines. MTI's heat engine Regarding how this relates to renewable energy sources, we could store heat produced by solar or wind energy by heating up tanks of liquid metal and thermal batteries that can store it for an extended period of time. We could utilize TPV cells to generate electricity from the heat on demand in order to convert the energy back into electricity. With the assistance of NREL scientists, MIT researchers have developed a thermal battery system that can convert heat up to 2,400 degrees Celsius into energy at roughly 40% efficiency, outperforming steam turbines by 5%. They calculated that improving the efficiency rate of TPV cells up to 35% would make thermal battery systems economically viable. The trick was stacking numerous layers of various semiconductor materials, some of which absorb photons primarily in the visible and ultraviolet spectrum, and others of which absorb infrared light. To reduce waste, a gold-plated mirror in the cell reflects any photons that aren't absorbed back to the heat source. This is the first time TPVs have gotten into really promising efficiency ranges, which is ultimately what matters for a lot of applications, says Andre Leonard a materials engineer at the University of Michigan. No moving parts is better. 
One of the advantages of solid-state energy converters is that, since they have no moving parts, they can run at greater temperatures with less maintenance. They simply sit there producing electricity consistently. One experimental path towards solid-state heat engines was provided by thermophotovoltaic cells. Similar to solar cells, TPV cells could be created from semiconducting substances with a specific band gap or the distance between a substance's valence band and conduction band. Without using moving rotors or blades, electricity can be produced if a photon with sufficient energy is absorbed by the material and kicks an electron across the band gap, where the electron can conduct. Due to the fact that most TPV cells are now constructed of very low band gap materials, which convert lower temperature, low energy photons, and less effectively convert energy, they have only achieved efficiencies of approximately 20%, with the record being 32%. Capturing Higher Energy Photons MIT's Henry A. Sagan and his colleagues tried to more effectively convert energy by capturing higher energy photons from a higher temperature heat source in their novel TPV design. In contrast to current TPV designs, the team's novel cell achieves this using higher bandiap materials and material layers. Three primary sections make up the cell's construction. A high bandgap alloy, a slightly lower bandgap alloy, and a layer of gold that resembles a mirror underneath. The highest energy photons from a heat source are trapped by the first layer and transformed into electricity, while lower energy photons that pass through the first layer are captured by the second layer and transformed to increase the voltage produced. Any photons that do travel through this second layer are then reflected back to the heat source by the mirror as opposed to being absorbed as unnecessary heat. The researchers used a heat flux sensor, which is a tool that monitors the heat absorbed from cells directly, to test the efficiency of the cell. They focused light from a high temperature lamp onto the cell and subjected it to it. They next modified the bolt's intensity or temperature and watched to see how temperature affected the cell's power efficiency, or how much power it produced in relation to how much heat is absorbed. The new TPV cell maintained an efficiency of about 40% over a temperature range of 1,900 to 2,400 degrees Celsius. We can get a high efficiency over a broad range of temperatures relevant for thermal batteries, Henry says. Grid-scale thermal batteries can replace fossil power plants. The scientists will construct a grid-scale thermal battery using the TPV cell. The device would absorb additional energy from renewable sources, such as the sun, and store it in well-insulated, hot graphite banks. When the energy was required, such as on overcast days, TPV cells would convert the heat into electricity and deliver the energy to a power grid. With the help of the cutting-edge TPV cell, the team has now successfully tested each of the system's essential elements in separate small-scale tests. They are aiming to combine the component parts to show a fully operational system. The next step is to scale up the system to replace fossil fuel-powered power plants and make it possible to establish a 100% carbon-free, renewable energy-only power grid. Thermophotovoltaic cells were the last key step toward demonstrating that thermal batteries are a viable concept. This is an absolutely critical step on the path to proliferate renewable energy and get to a fully decarbonized grid, says Henry. Do you also agree with what Henry says about TPV cells? Or is there any interesting alternative besides this technology? Share your opinion in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to us to get more updates on EVs Weekly.